So for the create message ID, we're going to create a new function here. So it's going to be public function, no, actually private function. We don't need this function running outside of this. So I don't even know why I typed that when, let me move this forward like that. So I will just move the private to the beginning, remove that function. So I already have this function and I've used it uh, several times. It's just a pain to, to type again. So I will change it to create message ID like that. So our message ID is just not going to be numbers. It's going to be numbers and letters. Now, the reason I want to do it this way, let me come back here just to make sure. Okay, so you see it's a variable character here. Uh, it's not numbers that we'll be putting here. And I will need to put an ID on this one, or an index, sorry, on the message ID. Actually, all these guys need indexes. I don't know if that's the pro, but yeah, indexes. So sender, receiver, add an index on each and every one of these except the message itself. So received, seen, all that requires an index because we will be using those things to read from the database. So every column that you'll be using to read from the database, you're better off adding an index. It will make your database bigger, but it will be quicker when reading information. So we'll make sure then. Okay, so accept tags, file, and messages. Okay, so we are good at this point. So the message ID will be a variable character. And this is because from my own personal experience, there was a time when, uh, when I had set a message ID to a number like uh, big int, for example, or, or int. So what, what used to happen was the uh, certain times I would have errors uh, saving messages maybe for some reason for one reason or another the number would be big and you know that uh, big int or int int i think has a maximum of 11 characters or 11 numbers so if for some reason the number the message id that you're putting in there is greater than 11 digits what will happen is the database will find the maximum number it can accommodate in this column and then that's the number it's going to put. So the message ID will be that specific number, the maximum number you can put in this column. But the problem is, if another person does the same thing from a totally different message, a totally different uh, message thread, and they try to save their message in the database, and for some reason there's an error and the number, the message ID is bigger than what this column can accommodate, what will happen is it will give them exactly the same message ID. And that's because the number, the maximum number this database can hold or this column can hold is always exactly the same. So if I click on change here, for example, message ID, if I click on change, you will see that uh, if I select big int, where is big int or int here, it's going to tell me it's showing right now the maximum number you can put in there. So the, those are the digits. I think that's about three, six, nine, ten. That looks like ten digits long number. So if, for example, for some reason you have an error and then the number you're trying to put in the database is bigger than that, it's going to default to that number. So it's going to be 21, 147, that number you see there. So now the problem is that you have a whole website of thousands of people that have the same message ID and then when they try to read their messages because it, the website will assume it's the same thread, it's going to show all the messages of other people to everybody else. So you don't want that kind of a situation in your messages, right? So you're better off using a variable character because even if the number is trimmed or truncated because the message ID column is not long enough, 
even if that happens, the number will still be more random than if you are using numbers that are very specific. So don't use numbers for message ID or thread ID, just the precaution there. So let's see how this function actually works here. So first of all, this is an array set to um, numbers. So this is an array with numbers zero to nine. So these are all the numbers you can ever have. And then these are all the letters you can ever have up to Z. And then there's these capital letters as well up to uh, there. So if you want, you can add symbols as well. Now just make sure those symbols are URL friendly. Like for example, I can add, if I put a comma there, I can add the, uh, the hyphen, which is uh, URL friendly, or I can add the underscore, which is also URL friendly. So you, you can add uh, as many as you want, percentages, stars, and so on, as long as they are compatible with URLs. So now that I've added two items there, I need to update this thing here to add two more. So it's going to be 63 over there. So what's happening here is that there's an array of possible characters we can have in our string, and then we have an empty string here. So what we do is we're provided the length there, which in my case, uh, my column can accommodate up to 60 numbers or 60 characters. So I'll put 60 there. Now, this is only a suggestion to the function that maximum number should be 60, but you can put anything below that. Now, the reason I did that is because I don't want all the messages, message ID to be the same length because that limits how many I can put so if they are variable lengths, even if it gets exactly the same characters, uh, there will be different IDs. So that increases the number of IDs I can get. So length is there. So let's imagine I put 60 there. So what I will do is I'll ask it to get a random number between 4 and 60. Now 4 is because I don't want anything lower than 4, any uh, ID with less than 4 characters. So between 4 and 60, let's say it gets 20, then it means it's going to loop 20 times. And every time it loops, it will get a random memory location here in this array and pick one item at random. So it's just going to be picking like this. Boop, 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 boop. And then every time it picks, it adds to the text here. And then finally, it will return that text. So easy peasy, right? So we come back here, there, boom. I think that's about it. So it looks like we can have our message here. But before we do that, let's just confirm that we are good with um, with these guys over here. Yeah. So if we are going to upload a file, obviously there is user ID here. Now we don't have this user ID. It's undefined at this point.